camera is on. So welcome back everyone. So like most, probably most of you guys who have kids, uh, your kids are probably going back to school. Today was the first day of school for Jack. Um, we homeschool, uh, but we're using a curriculum called uh, Classical Conversations. And I wanted to, Mrs. W to, to talk about that a little bit today. You just got back. Um, she's actually a teacher, a director, and she was a little, pretty effervescent. Oh, How's that? really? Yes, yeah, she was very effervescent. <laughs> Little did I know. Yeah, like a like a real life uh, plop plop fizz fizz. What is that? Oh, oh what I a was relief a it is. Al <laughs> Not a Pepto Bismol, no, an Alka Seltzer. Oh, okay. You were like a redheaded Alka Seltzer. <laughs> um, but I, we get a ton of questions from folks that uh, would like to consider homeschooling, don't know where to start. Uh, I mean, I certainly would be into that camp. So, can you talk a little bit about what you're doing, what the curriculum is, and um, in 10 minutes or so, yes. um, how folks can get involved with it if they wanted to look into it. So in 30 seconds or less, what is this classical conversation um, curriculum that we are using? It is a classical model of education where they have lots of memorizing, learning what to do with those things you've memorized, and then how to tell other people about it. I am teaching Challenge A, which is kind of uh, junior high to high school level. Jack is involved in that, and it was fabulous. So how many hours do you think you put in getting um, through the system, getting certified to be able to teach uh, these homeschool kids? A lot. <laughs> Way more than I had anticipated. Yeah. And um, a, lot of, a lot of screening, um, a lot of... Background uh, checks. A lot of education. Uh, yeah, a lot of education, training, but then there's also just learning the curriculum. I'm teaching Latin and math and writing and I'm going to be able to draw so the world. So there's a whole lot of different su subjects. You're basically a teacher, the, basically a traditional teacher uh, for these homeschool kids, if I understand it correctly. And there's four kids in your class, right? Right. Four kids in your class. So how it works is that uh, uh, you will go into town with Jack and you will actually teach these kids in a classroom setting one day a week. And then, and then they have their homes, then they have their work and everything to do throughout the week and then they come back and then you reevaluate and recheck it, right? Right, and oh. part of it is teaching them ownership over this, that they are actually in charge and how can they approach it the following week. So uh, I'm not a teacher in the normal sense of the, the manner, I'm a tutor to try to help them gain ownership of their own education. So what do you, you probably, I know you talk to a lot of women about about this and they, and they don't really know where to start. Um, what would you say to someone that would has the heart to do this, uh, but just just don't think that they can swing it uh, time wise? I think you can swing it. You just need to make it a priority. Um, I think you also need to attend some homeschooling conferences. You'll have a whole bunch of di different curriculum there, and you'll be able to see what might suit your personality, but also your children's personality. Because you don't want to do something that you find totally boring or your child hates. Some kids love workbooks. Some kids hate them. You want to make sure that you find something. Read books in the library. There's many, many great li books in the library. And also a reach out. Every state is different. So um, you want to make sure that you're in accordance with the laws of your state and that you're doing what you need to do. Yeah, and I think um, Mrs. W will be in the comments. So if you have particular questions on curriculum, um, you can probably jump in there and answer some of that stuff as well. And so we've done a, a number of different curriculums, part, partly based on where we've lived, what's available where we've lived. Um, there are so many different options and sometimes it takes a little while to find something and realize that there's nothing perfect. So if you find something pretty good, you might want to just stick with it because it will get better the more you understand the curriculum. So Classical Conversations is, is obviously a Christian-based um, organization. They, they, they had a lot of questions for you becoming a director. Mm -hmm. um, th they wanted to be sure that the folks that were teaching are coming from that background. Uh, is this something that would be appropriate for someone that was a, maybe not a Christian? They are welcome to come, but they have to realize that in the classroom, the position is that it's a Christian background. So they're welcome to come but realize that the books are Christian based and the teaching is from a Christian perspective. And what type of a topics would maybe diverge from a, a traditional uh, public school versus what you would, you would have uh, with classical conversations? Um, well, I mean, you start the day with prayer. You actually use the Bible in the classroom. You, uh, you know, today we were talking about, um, something and we talked about David and the Psalms. And so, I mean, you're certainly referring to, things that are happening in the Bible and you believe the Bible as a historical source, which, 
you know, in public schools, you wouldn't. Right. So. So I found it interesting. You, um, I, I noticed that you got up really early this morning that when Mrs. W gets a little nervous about something, she doesn't sleep very well and you were prepping, you've put a ton of prep into this. Um, when you left the house today, you were pretty, seemed a little bit nervous, but when you came back, completely different. So what happened today that that changed all that? Well, I'm definitely somebody who like, I can get nervous about something until I get into it. And then once I'm into it, I'm fine. And so class started, it was fine. It wasn't perfect, of course. The first day of class is always a little crazy and people don't have their books and you're trying to share guides and, you know, do different things. Um, but uh, I, I was prepared. I had done what I needed to do. The children are wonderful. And um, yeah, we're just going to have a great year. We're all going to learn so much. So well, let's close with this. What would you say would be the three uh, advantages um, to homeschooling that you see for our particular situation um, and maybe th uh, three disadvantages? Um, so advantage, I think number one for me is that as Jack is getting older and wanting to spend more time alone and do his things, this is a way for me to spend time with him, to be directly involved in having major conversations with him that he, um, that I might not otherwise do if I wasn't homeschooling him. I might not be spending as much time with him. Um, I get to hear about his day and what things are happening. And I think just oftentimes there's quality time, but then there's quantity time and quantity time is important to just wash dishes together. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Let's do Latin together. Let's talk about your math problems. Writing there in the car. Is, and yeah, there's things, writing right? in the car and having conversations. And um, yeah, there's something about quantity time too. Was that I think probably that was, like four and a half? Oh, that's probably. <laughs> I'm sure you got three in there. Uh, what What would be some of the, the downsides? Um, it is a ton of work. Mm -hmm. It is really, I'm teaching six different subjects and things. I've never had Latin. You know, I mean, I'm doing science. There's, it's just a lot of work. It's all new books for me in curriculum. Uh, so it's a lot of work and it's sacrifice, uh, you know, for the baby and for you. Um, arranging times and things. And for me too, it's, it's my free time and I no longer have that. So that is, I would say a negative. Being, uh, just being like a, a week or so ahead of the kids in Latin uh, reminds me of the story you told me when you were teaching English in Sweden and they asked you to teach um, a, a class on Native Americans, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And you were, you basically had the book and you would read a chapter and then you would go and teach and read it. So yeah. is, is it similar to that? No, no. I mean, I've had, I've had a lot of Spanish and I've had you yeah, know, good German. With, good, and good with languages. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I don't know if I'm good, but I have a language base. And so certainly mm -hmm. I understand what's going on. And I understand, you know, in English, it's word order, you know, where if, if you mess up the word order in English, you sound like Yoda, where if in Latin, it doesn't matter what word order you have. It means, you know, so, I mean, I understand that because of my language study and because I like languages and I'm a bit of a nerd. So, um, yeah, I knew that Yoda part. <laughs> I keep telling him he should be in my class with me. We'd have so much fun together. <laughs> so, well, I'm very proud of you. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful that you can do it. Something that's interesting, uh, when we go out, um, of course, you know, one of the, there's two questions that people always ask. And it's first is, you know, what do you do for work? And if you have children, uh, they ask you, especially this time of year, so what grade are you, are you in or where are you going to school? Well, and are you going to tell the funny story about when Jack was little? You go ahead. So when Jack was little, uh, when you say you homeschool, people just look at you, you know, like you're an alien with one eye in the, you know, middle of your forehead. Right. And so well, we had uh, taught they, Jack when he was really little. Ho homeschoolers have not been portrayed very favorably in, in some movies and, tele or and TV programs. Right. So I think that's kind of people's only... Uh, maybe connection with that. It's right. not. It's not the case. So I mean, there's social homeschoolers, so there's weirdo homeschoolers, or yeah. social public school kids. There's weirdo. I mean, there's you know, you've yeah. got the gamut everywhere. I, I think. Um, welcome, welcome to life. Yeah, but so when Jack was probably like five or six years old, and people would be like, How, "Why aren't you in school today?" And he would say to the cashier at the grocery store, "I homeschool. What grade are you in?" And he would always say eighth grade. And it was so funny because he understood that it was a joke. And they would mm -hmm. look at him and then he would start chuckling. And then He's they like would... a first grader. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And so then they would realize that, oh, he, you know, he, this is a joke for him as I well. I may have taught him to do that. I may have. <laughs> <laughs> we may have taught him to do that. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's wonderful what you're doing. And we're really proud of you. And um, I, the point I was wanting to make is when, when we do go out and people ask that question, and, and Jack always says, oh, well, I'm homeschooled. 
oftentimes the answer is, oh, I wish I could have done that, or oh, I was homeschooled for two or three years. It was so good. I, I've, I don't know that I've ever heard anyone come out and say, I had a terrible experience. I couldn't wait to get out of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean it, 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 sometimes there's not a fit. You know, sometimes you can't, you can't swing it. If money's tight and, and you've got both people working, you know, I mean, I, there's challenges there. And, yeah. and, um, and I think it's important. There's some kids who are super social and to sit home all day yeah. would not be right for them. And every year we ask Jack, like, do you want to do it? And we look at the private schools in the area and we, you know, we, he certainly has the option to attend school if he would want, it would be something we would need to discuss as a family. Um, but fortunately he thinks I'm his number one teacher. Well, I might not be his number one teacher, but I am his teacher. I threatened him. No. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll close with this. Um, it was one of the points I wanted to make. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, so if you have questions about it, Miss um, W and I will be in the in the comments. She's certainly more of the expert on it than I have. I am, uh, but I'm very proud of all of them, and and I think it's wonderful. So are you happy to get your wife back? He's been like, let's go do this and that. I'm like, I can. I gotta read. Yeah, because when you when you made this proposal to me uh, that you wanted to get the, this directorship and, and become really involved in this, um, I, I wasn't quite prepared for the amount of time and effort you put into it. So we're out of the woods now, and now you, now you can kind of, uh, I can have you back a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, you plan on seeing Mrs. W in more videos, hopefully, and we'll see you guys on the next one.